The lesson for today will be Chapter 6, all about skeletal system. The components of the skeletal system includes the bone, which is the main skeleton. You also have the cartilage, which reduces friction and model for bone formation. You also have the tendons, which attach bone to muscle. And you also have your ligaments, which attach bone to bone. There are two divisions of the skeletal system. The first one is the axial skeleton and the second one is the appendicular skeleton. Both divisions of the skeletal system will be further discussed in this lecture. For the functions of the skeletal system, this is for the support of the body, protection of soft organs, for movement due to attached skeletal muscles, storage of minerals and fats, and of course, blood cell formation. Bones, cartilages, tendons, and ligaments are connective tissues. Their characteristics are largely determined by the composition of their extracellular matrix. The matrix always contains collagen, ground substance, and other organic molecules, as well as water and minerals. To further understand the components of the extracellular matrix, let me define them starting with collagen. It is actually a tough, rope-like protein. In the ECM, you will also see proteoglycans, which are large molecules consisting of many polysaccharides attaching to and encircling core proteins. They also form large aggregates and attract water. The bone's extracellular matrix is composed of collagen and minerals. The collagen is for flexible strength, and the minerals include calcium and phosphate for bone compression weight-bearing strength. Most of the minerals in the bone is in the form of calcium phosphate crystals called hydroxyapatite. In the cartilage's extracellular matrix, you will see collagen for toughness and proteoglycans for smoothness and resilience. As a result, cartilage is relatively rigid, but it springs back to its original shape after being bent or slightly compressed. It is also a good shock absorber. Lastly, for tendons and ligaments, their ECM is made of collagen and fibers which are very tough, like ropes or cables. There are four bone shape classifications. The first one are long bones that are longer than they are wide. Second are the short bones which are approximately as wide as they are long. Next are flat bones which have relatively thin, flattened shape and irregular bones that includes the vertebrae and facial bones which have shapes that do not fit readily into the other three categories. Bones can be also classified based on the bone tissue they have. The first is the compact and the second is your spongy or cancellous bones. The names of the bones can sometimes be based on the surface features of them like it can be sites of attachments for muscles, tendons, and ligaments, or it can be passages for nerves and blood vessels. Categories of the bone markings include projections and processes, like the grown out from the bone surface or depressions or cavities like indentions. For the long bone structures, first we have what we call the diaphysis. The diaphysis is also known as the shaft, and it is composed of your compact bone tissue. Next is your epiphysis, which is the end of the bone, and it contains spongy bone tissue. Next, we have the articular cartilage, which covers your epiphysis and functions in reducing the friction. Next, we have the epiphyseal plates. This is the site of growth and they are found between diaphysis and epiphysis. Bones contain cavities such as the large medullary cavity in the diaphysis, as well as the smaller cavities in the epiphysis of long bones and in the interior of other bones. These spaces are filled with soft tissue called marrow. Note that red marrow is the location of blood forming cells like RBC, platelets, and other WBCs. The yellow marrow, this is where some of the WBCs arise, and the color is due to the amount of fat cells 
that is inhibiting there. In newborns, most bones have blood making a red bone marrow, but in adults, red marrow in the diaphysis is being replaced by the yellow bone marrow, and most of the red marrow is found in flat bones and the long bones of the femur and the humerus. Next, we have the perostium. This is the membrane around the bone's outer surface. And then we have the endosteum, which is the membrane that lines the medullary cavity. This is a comparison of the young and adult bones. In the young bones, the tissues found are most likely the spongy or cancellous type of tissue. But when it matures, most of this tissue becomes the compact tissue. For a compact bone tissue, the location is in the outer part of the diaphysis or the long bones and thinner surfaces of the other bones. So you have what you call your ostion, which is a structural unit of compact bone. It includes your lamella, lacunae, canaliculus, the central canal, and your osteocytes. The lamella is actually the rings of bone matrix. Next, you have your lacunae. This is the spaces between the lamella. You also have your canaliculi or canaliculus, which are tiny canals, and they are used for transporting nutrients and removal of waste. Next is your central canal, which is the center of your ostion, and they contain your blood vessels. This is an image of how your, the cross-section of a bone looks like. So you see there your canaliculi, this one. You have your central canal in the middle. You have your lacunae, which includes or which houses your ostions. And of course, the concentric rings of the lamellae. Again, as I have explained before, you can actually compare this one in a cross-section of a tree. Okay, so it has a central part and then it has concentric rings around it. So the spongy and cancellous bone tissue, their location is um, more likely found in the epiphysis of the long bones and center of the other bones. And um, the most, uh, or the characteristic that is very present in this spongy or cancellous bone tissue is the presence of the trabeculae, which are interconnecting rods and spaces that contain your marrow and a part um, or if you compare it also with your compact bones, they don't have ostions. Okay. For the changes in the human skeleton, in embryos, the skeleton is primarily hyaline cartilage, but during development, much of this cartilage is being replaced into a bone. So the cartilages remain in isolated areas like your bridge of the nose, parts of your ribs, and of course your joints. So for the bone cells, we have here what you call your osteoblast, which is responsible for the formation of the bone and the repair and remodeling of the bone. So when you say osteoblast, meaning they are bone generating cells and B means building, okay? Next you have your osteocytes, which are the cells that maintain bone matrix and form from osteoblast after bone matrix has surrounded it. So there are the mature bone cells. They look like spider shaped and they maintain the bone tissue. And then next you have your osteoclasts, which contribute to bone repair and remodeling by removing existing bone called the bone reabsorption. So osteoclasts, they carve the bone, they, um, the bone destroying cells and C means chewing, okay? So for the bone formation, you have what we call here now the ossification or the process of bone formation. So it occurs utero, meaning even if um, the embryo is still developing in the womb of a woman, the bone formation is already occurring. So the osteoblast role is again to build the bone. And after an osteoblast becomes surrounded by a bony matrix, it becomes an osteocyte. So from osteoblast to osteocyte. So the bone formation, again, the concept should be known as what you call the 
osteogenesis or ossification, which is the formation of bones. So the ossification center is where the bone formation begins. And um, we have two different types of ossification centers. The first one is your primary ossification center, where bone first begins to appear and it forms your diaphysis. And then the secondary ossification center, it forms your epiphysis. The types of bone formation, the first one is your intermembranous ossification. The compact and spongy bone develops directly from sheets of mesenchymal undifferentiated connective tissue. Please remember this one, that intramembranous ossification, the origin of the bone is from the connective tissues. It begins in utero differing, uh, during fetal development and continues on into adolescence. At birth, the skull and clavicles are not fully ossified, nor are the sutures of the skull closed. So this is the reason why um, whenever that um, someone gives birth to a baby, um, holding them softly is the best way to care for their skull because it is not yet fully formed and it is not hardened yet. Okay, so this allows the skull and shoulders to deform during passage through the birth canal. So that is one of the most important characteristics why the skull and the shoulders of the baby when they are bo born, they are very, um, uh, they can actually, they are very flexible, okay, to be, to be able to go through to the birth canal. So the last bones to ossify via intramembranous ossification are the flat bones of the face, which reach their adult size at the end of the adolescent growth spurt. So during the intramembranous ossification, first, you see the mesenchymal cells group into clusters and the ossification centers form. Okay, so this here you see, here you see the mesenchymal cells. Okay. So the secreted osteoid traps osteoblasts, which then becomes your osteocytes. So this is your osteoid. So osteoids are secreted by osteoblasts, uncalcified matrix, which calcifies or hardens within a few days as mineral salts are deposited on it and thereby entrapping the osteoblast within. Once entrapped, the osteoblasts become your osteocytes. So, as osteoblites transform into osteocytes, osteogenic cells in the surrounding connective tissue differentiate into new osteoblasts. Okay? So, here you will see the presence of osteoid. You also have your osteoblast. And then, of course, the osteocytes or the more mature types of cell. Okay? So, in the trabecular matrix and um, perostrum, actually forms after this one. So you see here now your trabeculae formation. Okay, and of course the formation of your perostrum. Next, you have the compact bone development in the superficial to the trabecular bone and crowded blood vessels condense into red marrow. So this one, the last picture here. So here you will see that um, there's already maturity of, um, or there is already a, the presence of your osteoblast, and then the blood vessels are already developing within the trabecular bone. Okay. So this is actually how um, the skull or the bone formation looks like in infants or fetus. Okay. So types of bone formation, the second one will be the endochondrial ossification. If the intramembranous um, ossification originates by replacing your connective tissues in the endochondrial ossification, bones develop by replacing the hyaline cartilages found in the embryos. So cartilage does not become bone. So instead, cartilages serves as a template to become uh, completely replaced by a new bone, okay? And then it takes much longer than the intramembranous ossification, okay? So again, the hyaline cartilage is not converted into um, the bone itself, but then it is being used as a template, okay? So for the endochondrial ossification, 
So the steps, of course, first we have the chondroblast building a cartilage model, then the chondroblast became chondrocytes. And then a perichondrium surrounds most of the cartilages. Okay. So the second one, the cartilage model calcifies or hardens. So here you will see that um, a bone color is produced and the perichondrium of diaphysis becomes your periosteum. Third, you have the osteoblast invade the calcified cartilage and primary ossification center to form your diaphysis. And then the fourth one will be the secondary ossification centers from the epiphysis. Okay, they already form it. And then lastly, the original cartilage model is almost completely ossified and remaining cartilage is the articular cartilage. Okay. So it, it's like um, you're forming an adult bone within the cartilage, okay? But it is not really converting the um, hyaline cartilage into bone, but it is being used as a template to follow. Okay? So for the bone growth in length, okay, so how does your bone grow long, okay? So of course you have the epiphyseal Plate, which is again the area of the growth in long bones. It is a layer of hyaline cartilage where ossification occurs in immature bones. Again, you have your epiphyseal side, which is where the cartilage is formed, and you have the diaphyseal side where cartilage is ossified and diaphysis grows in length. Okay, so um, if you see here, okay, no, the actually the growth plate zones are usually uh, found at the tip of the bone, okay? So there are different zones that are included or that participate in the bone growth development. So the first one, we have your reserve zone, okay? So the reserve zone is the region closest to the epiphyseal end of the plate and contains small chondrocytes within the matrix. So this is where actually... Um, where the matrix production happens. So these chondrocytes do not participate in bone growth, but secure the epiphyseal plate to the osseous tissue of the epiphysis. Okay. Next, we have the proliferative zone. So this is the next layer towards the diaphysis and contains stacks of slightly larger chondrocytes. So this, is, uh, this makes new chondrocytes via mitosis to replace those that die at the diaphyseal end of the plate. Next, you have the zone of maturation and hypertrophy. So here you will find lipids, glycogen, alkaline, phosphatase, accumulation of matrix, and it also does the calcification. So this is the layer where older, mature, and larger chondrocytes are found. And more mature cells are situated closer to the diaphyseal end of the plate. Next, we have the zone of the calcified matrix. This is one closest to the diaphysis, and most of the cells are dead because of the matrix around them has already been calcified. And capillaries and osteoblasts from the diaphysis penetrate this zone, and the osteoblasts secrete bone tissue on the remaining calcified cartilage. It also connects the epiphyseal plate to the diaphysis. And then we also have the zone of ossification, this is where um, the osteoblasts deposit bone matrix onto the exposed plates of the calcified cartilage. And then you also have the bone of resorption, but it is not um, really seen here on the image, but it is where your osteoclasts absorb the oldest ends of the bone spicules. Note that the high vascularity density in this area, one capillary loop, for each chondrocytic column is present. Narrow partitions of calcified cartilage are left behind as the bone grows in length. Okay, so here you will see how the bone grows in length because of the different zones that are um, included or that perform different functions, um, like which zone does the um, part wherein there should be replication of the cells 
where um, the cells do mature and where do cells die off. Okay. So, of course, when there's already um, cell death, of course, it already gives you or dictates that the growth of the bone should already stop. Okay. So, the longitudinal growth of bone is a result of the cellular division of the proliferative zone and the maturation of cells in the zone of maturation and hypertrophy, as well as when the osseous tissue is added to the diaphysis. So, if you see here the image in the growing long bone, okay, so it is shorter than the usual, and of course, after the maturation process happens, you see there that um, the epiphyseal lines, okay, are already uh, much more mature than the growing uh, the or the younger long bone, and then of course the the diaphysis is much longer than the young bone. Okay, but then um, the position of the epiphysis metaphysis are the same. They are both found on the extremes of the bone. Okay, the changes are more likely seen when it comes to the length or the size of the diaphysis. Okay, so bones continue to grow in length until entirely adulthood. The rate of the growth is also controlled by hormones. And when the chondrocytes in the epiphyseal plate cease their proliferation and bone replaces the cartilage, longitudinal growth stops. And all that remains in the epiphyseal plate is the epiphyseal line. Okay, so those are the markings, the epiphyseal lines. Okay. So, if the bone can actually grow long, how does the bone now grow in diameter? Okay. So, this is actually what we call the appositional growth. This is the growth in diameter and can continue even after longitudinal growth ceases. So, osteoclasts reabsorb old bone that lies the medullary cavity. While osteoblast via intramembranous ossification produce new bone tissue beneath the perostium. So the erosion of the old bone along the medullary cavity and the deposition of new bone beneath the perostium not only increase the diameter of the diaphysis, but also increase the diameter of the medullary cavity. So this process is what we call the modeling process. Okay, so in this one, um, the stars are actually the osteoblasts and, of course, the osteoclasts. Okay. So, in bone remodeling, it involves removal of existing bone by osteoclast and deposition of the new bone by the osteoblast. And it actually occurs in all bones of the body. Responsible for changes in bone shape, bone repair, adjustment of bone to stress, and calcium ion regulation. And, of course, injury, exercise, and other activities lead to remodeling. So the bone repair steps are as follows. First, you have broken bone causes bleeding and blood clot forms. Next, callus forms, which is a fibrous network between two fragments. And then cartilage model forms first, then osteoblasts enter the callus and form callus bone. This continues for about four to six weeks after injury. And then cancellous bone is slowly remodeled to form compact and cancellous bones. So this is actually how it looked like. So if there's already a clot formation, okay, so you have first your injury and then of course there, should, there will be a blood clot um, that forms in the damaged area. And then there will be a network of cartilage or fibers you call the callus. Okay, so this one, this is a callus. It includes your cartilage and fibers, okay, that houses of course or that is developed on the um, broken bone and then of course callus ossification happens next so the osteoblasts enter the callus and form the spongy bone okay and then bone remodeling at last this is the uh, wherein most of the spongy bone is slowly remodeled to form compact bone and the repair is complete already once the um, spongy bone is already developed into a compact bone. So the common types of uh, fractures include your linear, 
you also have the complete fracture you also have the incomplete you have um, comminuted like um, broken into pieces you also have the transverse which is actually like a cross-section fracture of your bone you also have impacted wherein um, the bones get in contact uh, because of too much pressure and then you also have the spiral and of course the oblique types of fracture okay so these types of fracture can happen especially if you meet accidents or if there's too much uh, pressure when it comes to doing certain activities like exercises or even athletic activities okay so bone and calcium homeostasis so this is very important when it comes to the development of the bone so the bone is a major storage site for calcium okay um, movement of the calcium in and out of the bone helps determine blood levels of the calcium and calcium moves into the bones as osteoblasts build new bone calcium move out of the bone as osteoclasts break down the bone and calcium homeostasis is maintained by the parathyroid hormone and the presence also of calcitonin. Okay. So this diagram explains how your calcium homeostasis happens in the body. So for you to better understand how the calcium homeostasis happens, tatagalugin ko para maintindihan. Okay? Sa calcium homeostasis, kailangan unang-una daw merong pagbaba. Okay, there should be a decrease of blood calcium. Okay, once there's already a decrease or pagbaba ng blood calcium, okay, i-stimulate niya ngayon si parathyroid gland or sasabihan niya si parathyroid gland para mag-secrete ng parathyroid hormone. Okay, again, bababa yung calcium level sa dugo. Pag bumaba yan, sasabihan si parathyroid gland na maglabas ng parathyroid hormone. Okay? Ano ngayon ang gagawin ni parathyroid hormone? Si parathyroid hormone, sasabihan niya ngayon yung mga osteoclast na mag-umpisang magtrabaho by breaking down the bone. And by breaking down the bone or pagsira dun sa bone, magre-release ngayon ng panibagong calcium sa dugo. Okay. Remember that osteoclast carve the bone. Okay. Again, si parathyroid hormone, nagsisignal siya kay osteoclast para sirain yung bone or i-carve yung bone. At habang kinakarve yung bone, nagkakaroon ulit ng release of calcium sa blood. Okay. Ngayon, si parathyroid hormone, hindi lang yan ang ginagawa. Sa kidneys naman, Si parathyroid, ini-English niya yung calcium reabsorption naman galing sa urine. Okay, sa kidneys, okay, ang ginagawa ni parathyroid hormone is yung pagkuha ulit ng calcium naman galing sa urine. At the same time, parathyroid hormone also stimulates or pinapagalaw niya yung formation ng vitamin D. Okay? That's in the kidneys. Ngayon, pag meron na tayong vitamin D production, okay, sa katawan, it promotes also or pinapagana niya ulit yung calcium absorption naman galing sa small intestine. Okay? So, kapag ka nag-increase yung blood calcium, okay, kasi mas, marami ng reabsorption, eh, you have um, the increase in the reabsorption of um, calcium in the urine, and then meron kang vitamin D na may absorption ulit ga galing naman sa small intestine. Of course, when there is already an increase in blood calcium again, it also stimulates your calcitonin secretion from the thyroid gland. Okay? So, si thyroid gland naman ngayon, kapag ka marami na siyang uh, nasisecrete na calcitonin, ang ginagawa niya naman, ini-inhibit. Okay? Anong ibig sabihin ng ini-inhibit sa Tagalog? Pinipigilan niya. Okay? Si calcitonin yung nagpipigil naman sa osteoclast. Okay? Ito. 
Pinipigilan niya si osteoclast na mag-breakdown ng bone para hindi mag-release ng calcium. Okay? So, eto naman, kapag ka napigilan na ngayon ni calcitonin, si osteoclast na magsumira sa bone, ang nangyayari is nagde-develop naman ngayon ng mga osteoblast or mga panibagong cells para mag-take up ng calcium from the blood going to the bone. Okay? Naintindahan ba yun? So, ganun nangyayari or yun yung mga um, role ni parathyroid hormone kung ano yung part ng body na ina-affect niya for the reabsorption and absorption kung ano yung mga uh, ibang parts of the body which is responsible for the calcium homeostasis. Okay? So, again, for this calcium homeostasis to get started or to be triggered in the first place, there should be a decrease in calcium in the blood. Okay? To stimulate the parathyroid glands to release your parathyroid hormone to ignite it. Okay? But when there's already the presence of your calcitonin, okay, pag may calcitonin na, because of the um, secretion of your thyroid gland naman, eto na yung nagpapatigil kay osteoclast na, o oh, tigil na sa pagbabakbak ng, ng bone. Kailangan naman mag-introduce tayo ng new cells, like your osteoblast, to take up the calcium again and to reform the bone. Okay? So, of course, kapag uh, hindi, hindi na ibabalik yung osteoblast, of course, underlying conditions may happen. Okay? Kung hindi na nakakapag-produce yung katawan natin ng new bones or new cells for new bones. Okay? So, doon na nag stop yung tinatawag na growth and maybe also repair. Okay? So, for the hematopoietic tissues, so these are tissues that make your blood cells. So, again, your red marrow is located or is a location for blood forming cells. And again, yellow is mostly from fat. Okay? So, ito yung yellow marrow. Usually, ito yung tinataktak natin sa bulalo. Okay? Na mataas ang concentration of cholesterol. Okay? So, it is called yellow because of the fat stores. Okay? So, the location of the hematopoietic tissue in newborns are actually found uh, sa lahat because, again, pag newborns kasi developing pa ang mga bones, so more likely they have more red marrow. And then, the location of the tissue, uh, hematopoietic tissues in adults is that the red is replaced with yellow marrow eventually, kapag, uh, lalo na kapag uh, na-reach na yung epitome ng development. And then, red marrow is mainly in the epiphysis of the femur and the humerus. Okay. Next, this um, table actually summarizes all of the bones that are present in an adult human skeleton. So, apparently, there are around 206 bones in total, but um, comparing it with um, a newborn, okay, mas marami ang bones of uh, a newborn child. Why? It's because some of them haven't fused yet. Some of them haven't, um, kumbaga, they haven't reached yet the maximum growth they have. Okay? So, usually, ang bones kasi ng newborn, um, hindi pa fused. Okay? Kaya nga, di ba, napaka-flexible nila and kailangan, they, they should be handled with care because their bones are still brittle by the time that they are born. Okay? But when fusion already happened for these bones, they become one bone na lang. Kaya nababawasan yung number. Okay? So, these are the anatomical terms for features of the bone. So, how are they being named? It can be, uh, this um, types of features can actually give an idea on their function and, of course, their location. Okay, like, uh, for example, the body or the shaft, which is actually the main portion of the bone. You have the head. This is usually enlarged, often rounded end. You have the neck, which is constricted area between the head and the body. When you say condyle, 
It is smooth, rounded, articular surface like your occipital condyle. You also have a facet, which is small, flattened, articular surface. You have the crest, which are prominent ridges. You also have the process or the prominent projection. You have the tubercle or tuberosity, which is numb, which is a nub or enlargement. You also have the trochanter, which is a large tuberosity found only in the proximal femur. The epicondyle, which is an enlargement near or above a condyle. For openings and depressions, you have a foramen, which is a hole. Um, a canal or meatus or a tunnel. Fissure or a cleft sinus or a cavity, and a fossa or a depression. So this is the uh, anterior and posterior views of your skeletal system or the skeleton. So the actual skeleton is composed of the skull, the vertebral column, and the thoracic cage. So the skull has 22 bones divided into those of the brain case and those of the face. The brain case, which encloses the cranial cavity, consists of eight bones that immediately surround and protect the brain. The bony structure of the face has 14 facial bones. 13 of the facial bones are rather solidly connected to form the bulk of the face. And then the mandible, however, forms a freely movable joint with the rest of the skull. And there are also three auditory ossicles in each middle ear. So there are six in total. So this is um, the lateral view of your cranial bone. So the first one, we have your frontal bone, which is the anterior part of your cranium. And then you have your parietal bone, which is uh, found in the sides of uh, and roof of your cranium. You also have your occipital bone, which is the posterior portion and floor of your cranium. You also have the temporal bone, which is um, the inferior uh, to parietal bones on each side of the cranium. You also have your sphenoid bone here, for uh, which forms a part of your cranium floor, lateral posterior portions of your eye orbits, lateral portions of your cranium, anterior to temporal bones. And then you have your ethmoid bone here which is the anterior portion of your cranium, including medial surface of the eye orbit and roof of the nasal cavity. Okay, so in this one, it is also very important that you know about um, the different sutures, okay, that divides this um, cranial bone. So you have here your coronal suture, and then you have your squamous suture here. You also have the lambdoid um, suture, so basically, those are the most important um, sutures that you should know uh, when it comes to um, the cranial bones. Okay. Next, let's go to the um, facial bones. So the first one we have here, your maxilla or the maxillae, which forms the upper jaw, anterior portion of the heart palate, part of the lateral walls of your nasal cavity, floors of the eye eye orbits and then you have your um, zygomatic bones okay so your zygomatic bone is uh, actually your cheek bones they also form the floor and lateral wall of each eye orbit and then you have your lacrimal bone which is uh, the middle surfaces of your eye orbits you also have your nasal bone. Uh, this actually form the bridge of your nose. You also have your vomer. This is the midline of the nasal cavity and it forms your nasal septum with the ethmoid bone. And then you have your inferior nasal concha, which is uh, attached to the lateral walls of your nasal cavity and your mandible. Uh, which is uh, the lower jaw bone, and this is the only movable skull of the bone. Okay. Uh, this is only the, I'm sorry, that, that is uh, the only movable skull bone. Okay. So you also have, again, your ethmoid bone there. You have um, the different skull bones. Okay. So 
actually another one would be your palatine bones but you will not see here on this image i'll show you in a bit so so if you um divide uh the skull uh horizontally okay you will see here how the floor of the skull looks like so you have um this is actually the frontal bone in front okay so this is a comparison with how it looks like on a um like in a real example or in a real um, model okay so you can see there the foramen magnum this is actually where um the skull meets your spinal or your vertebra your spinal cord okay so you have there your temporal bone so please study this one make sure that you will be uh, familiar with the different parts of your skull okay so this is actually the base of the skull so again here is your palatine bone so it is actually found uh, at the roof of your mouth okay so below it you see there the vomers the sphenoid bone so this doesn't include the uh, mandible okay it's just the roof of your skull okay, so you really have so much to memorize when it comes to um, understanding and knowing the different bones or uh, bone structures of your body okay please memorize uh, this one and then next one this is actually an image of how a newborn skull look like okay so if you compare it with the, an adult again most um, they have this what you call the fontanelles so these are present in newborn so this actually makes the bone uh, flexible for um, for uh, through through passing the birth canal so kapag uh, ang head kasi ng baby guys uh, nako compress okay when it di ba ang liit kasi ng birth canal imagine the uh, vagina it's very um, small but when it comes to giving birth it actually uh, stretches lalo na kapag uh, um, lalo na kapag ka nagigive birth kaya nga minsan mapapansin niyo yung mga ibang babies parang pahaba yung ulo nila it's because siguro yung puerta ng mother is really makipot, okay? So kailangan mag-adjust nung head nung baby. But eventually hindi naman talaga hindi naman talaga ganun yung um itsura ng head ng baby. Uh, usually bibilog din siya of course with um with the help of the parents na kapag ka natutulog dapat laging na turn sa mga sides kasi usually kapag ka ang baby lagi lang nasa isang uh, side lang ang ulo nila kapag uh, nagde-develop na yung bones and nag-grow na sila or nagmamature nagkakaroon ng flat surfaces okay so ayaw naman natin na ganun na parang spongebob yung ulo ng baby natin tama ba? so kailangan kapag ang baby uh, newborn and pinapatulog ng parents usually dapat walang unan uh, kailangan iniikot-ikot every side hindi ka, hindi pwede uh, hindi pwedeng flat lang flat laid lang palagi kasi nga ganun pag nagaharden na yung skull nagkakaroon ng flat ends yung ulo so ayun naman natin ng ganun na baby na parang kahon yung ulo nila so kailangan alagaan siya and then eventually this um fontanelles will um uh, mawawala na lang sila and then it becomes the sutures katulad ng pinakita ko sa inyo kanina so ito yung sinasabi ko din na kapag ka nagugrow ang isang baby at nagmamature the bones fuse kaya yung bilang ng total bones compared sa newborn at sa adult ay nag-iiba mas marami talaga sa mga newborns okay so please know also what are the different fontanelles okay because this might uh, be asked on your exam okay like what separates the frontal bones in a baby Okay, so you have here your frontal or anterior fontanelle. Okay, and then you have your occipital fontanelle. And then you have here your mastoid fontanelle at the sides. 
Okay. Ayan. And then you have your sphenoidal fontanel. Okay. So eventually this will come uh, this will develop into sutures at magfuse na yung mga frontal bones and the other bones of the skull. So this now or this image is explaining to you now or showing to you how the paras, uh, paranasal sinuses look like. So there are sev uh, several of the bones associated with the nasal cavity have large cavities within them and these are called the paranasal sinuses which open into the nasal cavity. So the paranasal sinuses are the following. You have your frontal sinus, you have your ethmoidal sinus, the sphenoidal sinus, and of course your maxillary sinus. So usually these sinuses are being connected when it, whenever you have colds or yung may sipon kayo. And they are also connected when it comes to having headaches. Okay, di ba nga kapag uh, sabi nila if you have um, frontal headaches, usually yung mga sinus yan, na masyadong mataas ang pressure. Okay, so sila yan. So next you have now here your hyoid bone. Okay. So, itong hyoid bone na to, it's like a floating bone sa lalamunan. Okay? Sa bandang neck. Okay? So, the hyoid bone is an unpaired U-shaped bone that is not part of the skull and has no directly bony attachment to the skull or any other bones. So, this bone has the unique distinction of being the only bone in the body that does not articulate with other bones. The hyoid bone provides an attachment for some tongue muscles and it is an attachment point for the important neck muscles that elevate the larynx. Okay. So next we have the vertebral column. So it is also known as the spine. So don't be confused about your spinal cord or spinal column and the vertebral column. So the spinal cord is... Um, the tissue inside your vertebral column. So, the vertebral column serves as the, the casing of your spinal cord. Okay? So, it is, the, uh, it is the central axis of the skeleton extending from the base of the skull to slightly past the end of your pelvis. So, in adults, it is usually consists of 26 individual bones grouped into 5 regions. And the adult vertebral column has four major curvatures. You have the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and the sacrococcygeal. Okay? So, for the seven cervical region, it curves anteriorly or paharap. The twelve thoracic region curves posteriorly. The five lumbar region curves anteriorly. And then you have uh, the sacrococcygeal. So you have one sacrum and one coccyx. They are combined together and they actually curve posteriorly. So it just means that your vertebral column is not really straight at all. They do have a certain um, degree of curvature. So imagine if your um, vertebral column is just straight, diba? so um, parang there's no room for us to bend or to move. Para lang tayong um, poste, na derecho lang talaga. Okay, so itong mga curves na to, they really aid when it comes to movements okay, of our um, body. So, um, the bone, the first cervical vertebra is what we call the atlas. It actually holds the head. And then the second one would be your axis, which um, gives the capability to rotate the head. Okay? So the major functions of your vertebral column includes the support, uh, your body weight. It protects the spinal cord. It allows spinal nerves to exit the spinal cord. So there are, uh, you see there several uh, invertebral foramina, this one. Okay, this is foramina, mga butas in between. So, this is where your spinal nerves come out. And it also provides a site for muscle attachment. And it also provides movement of the head and the neck. Okay? 
So again, you have seven cervical regions. Okay, you have 12 thoracic. You have five lumbar. And then you have the sacral and the coccygeal region, one in each. So na fuse sila. Okay, they are they are fused together. This is the sacrum and the coccyx. So sabi nga nila before, um, in evolution, di ba nga ang mga monkeys, they have tails. Um, but then again, sa atin, since uh, we have evolved as humans, so instead of us having tail, we have the coccyx. So parang yan yung uh, mini tail ng mga tao. Okay? And then, ang sacrum talaga guys, um, during, uh, in the earlier years of development, yung sacrum na yan, madami siyang bones din. Pero as we age, or as uh, a human develops and matures, nag-fuse yung mga bones na yun ng sacrum. Okay? Kaya siya nagiging isa na lang. Okay? So, this is actually how a vertebra or um, a level of a of the spinal uh, vertebra looks like. Okay? But, um, depending on the level, like uh, kung lumbar ba siya, cervical ba siya, or thoracic ba siya, hindi sila magkakaparehas ng itsura. Okay? So, this one lang pinapakita niya yung anong itsura ng anterior. When you say anterior, yung medyo nasa harap. So, you have the body here. And then, you have the vertebral foramina. Dito dumadaan sa spinal cord. And then, the posterior has what you call your spinous processes. Okay? And then, on the sides, you see here the pedicel which connects the body going to the um, vertebral arch and, of course, your spinous processes. You also have the transverse processes at the sides. You have your superior articular processes. Okay, and then the articular facets. Of course, dito dumidikit yung kasunod ng mga bones. And then the lamina um, connects now your transverse processes going to your spinous processes. So, collectively, the pedicel and the lamina is what you call your vertebr uh, vertebral arch. Okay. So, this is actually how your different vertebral column uh, differ from each other, depending on the region or the level. So, for example, here you have your atlas, which is the first uh, cervical vertebra. So, if you see, it doesn't really have a spinous process, but it does have a transverse process, and then the facets are larger. Okay. So, this is the real one. And then, for the axis, ito na, it already develops a spinous process. And then, mas maliit yung size niya compared sa atlas. Okay? And then, it already has a dense, this one, which articulates with the atlas. Okay? So, this is actually how it looks like laterally. Okay, sa gilid. And then, next, you have your thoracic vertebra. Pag thoracic naman yung vertebra mo, um, mas malalaki yung spinous processes niya. You have multiple facets. You have, um, one is for the attachment of the rib, and then this one for the attachment naman papunta dun sa susunod na vertebra, um, a region of the vertebra. And then, of course, you have shorter pedicles. You have the lamina you still have the vertebral foramen. So, if you check on the vertebral foramen, ang laki ng atlas, tapos mal, mas maliit yung sa axis, and then mas lumiliit siya pagdating sa thoracic vertebra. Okay? So, this one naman is the cervical vertebra. You have transverse processes multiple. Okay? Kung yung ibang transverse processes, guys, tignan nyo, nasa taas, yung cervical, medyo nasa baba siya. Okay, nasa tabi siya ng body. Again, you have the vertebral foramen. Mas malaki sa cervical compared to your lumbar. Okay, na mas maliit. Pero, ang spinous process ng lumbar ay mas um, pointed compared naman sa spinous process na meron siyang 
dalawang projections. Okay? And then, ang lamina niya is mas manipis compared to this one na mas makapal. And of course, the pedicel also is comparable. Okay? And then, of course, the facets, tignan nyo, yung itsura ng mga facets nila. Okay? Depending on the region, magkakaiba sila. So, please be familiar with how the different regional um, vertebra looks like. Okay, kung ano yung mga pinagkakaiba niya. Kasi usually, these are being given in um, the laboratory exams. Okay? On how to effectively um, determine which type of vertebral corum or which region of the vertebra is being um, is being notified or being given to you during exams. Okay? Sayang lang na wala tayong moving exams because this is actually how we'll be able to gauge how much you know about this um, examples. But definitely in your APR, you will learn more about this um, types of uh, or the differences of this regional vertebra. Okay? Next, you have the sacrum. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo guys na um, pagka bata pa or young pa yung sacrum okay this is actually composed of several bones and uh, you have your one one here you have two three four five six seven eight nine including the coccyx din yung coccyx ano siya four bones no nag nagfufuse so it becomes one na lang okay unlike the cervical, thoracic, and the lumbar, you'll be able to see na pwede nyo siyang paghiwa-hiwala yan isa-isa, but this one, no. Okay? Nag-fuse sila into one. Okay? So, yan naman yung itsura ng uh, sacrum and the coccyx. So, that is the sacrococcygeal region. So, the thoracic cage this protects your vital organs and there are 12 pairs of the ribs. So, your sternum is the breastbone. True ribs are attached directly to the sternum by a cartilage. The false ribs are attached di indirectly to the sternum by a cartilage and the floating ribs are not attached to the sternum. Okay. So, this is actually how they look like. So, you have seven true ribs. Okay, so they are attached to the sternum. So, this is the sternum. Okay, so the sternum, this one, the sternum actually has three parts. You have the manubrium, this one. Okay, and then you have the body. And then you have your cephoid process. Okay, so that makes up your sternum. So, what, which whichever rib is attached to the sternum, that's what you call your true ribs. Okay? And then the false ribs, this one, this is the 8 to 12 rib. Okay? They are not really um, connected to the sternum. Okay? And then, of course, you also have your floating ribs at the back. Ito. Okay? These are not really connected to your sternum. Okay, so more likely they are found or they are connected at uh, in your vertebral column. Okay. Next, you have your pectoral girdle. So it includes your scapula or the shoulder blades. And then you have your clavicle or the collar bones. Ito. Ito gustong gusto ng lahat to na kapag, payat, kapag nakikita daw yung clavicle nila or the collar bone, e payat sila. Okay. So for your upper limb bones, first you have your um, humerus okay, of the upper limb. And then for the forearm, you will see there your ulna and your radius. Okay? 
And then for your hands, you have your carpal bones, okay, which um, comprises the bones of your wrist. And then you have your metacarpal bones. And then for the um, and then the tips will be the phalanges. Okay, so the metacarpals and the phalanges, um, when combined together, forms the bone. Uh, bones of your hands. Okay? So, when it comes to positioning, paano nyo ba malalaman kung yung bone nyo okay, is the reduce or the ulna? Okay? Alin ba? Which is which? Okay? Lalo na kapag kakunyari um, you are having an exam or moving exam and then you're given um, a skeleton of the forearm. Okay? Usually, ang pinakamadaling gawin dyan is, um, you also try, no, uh, face your palms up, okay, parang, parang namamalimos, okay, um, locate your thumb, okay, sa thumb part, that will be your, uh, yung, yung kahilera ng thumb nyo, that is the radius, okay, and then sa pinky finger, kung ano yung, uh, kahilera ng pinky finger, that is your ulna. Okay? So, even kahit na ibaliktad natin yung forearm natin o kaya facing the palm down naman, dapat alam nyo na ang katapat dapat ng inyong finger, uh, thumb is your radius and then your pinky finger is your ulna. Okay? So, that's very important in um locating the bones in your body. Okay? May proper position and proper um, kumbaga, description okay? on how you can um, identify them. Lalo na kung kunyari, uh, moving exam, you're just given um, a forearm in the hand. Uh, paano nyo manalaman kung yung nakapin ba na yun sa forearm is your radius or your ulna? So, you can also, um, uh, malalaman nyo din naman siya by also knowing how the bone looks like separately. Okay? So, ano bang kinaibahan ni radius at ni ulna kapag ka-separated sila from one another? So, other than the length, of course, syempre kung mas mataba ba or mas payat ba yung bone, yung processes ba niya or yung mga... Um, yung mga ends ba ng bone niya ay pareha. So, hindi. Ganon. Ganon nyo sila dapat i-compare sa isa't isa. So, let's go with um, the humerus. So, this is actually how it looks like. Okay. So, you have there the head. Medyo malaki siya. Siya yung naka-attach with your um, pecs or the pectoral girdle, di ba? You have there your greater tubercle. And then the lesser tubercle. And then, of course, the shaft is what you call the deltoid tuberosity. Okay. And then, uh, at the lower part, you, you will see there the lateral epicondyl. Of course, it's an epicondyl found at the sides of the bone. And then, the medial epicondyl is more putru, uh, protruded. Kumbaga, mas... Uh, mas pointed yung medial epicondyl. Ibig sabihin lang nun, yan yung kapag ka nakaharap, ah, naka-face, nakaharap yung kamay nyo pababa. Okay? And then, um, of course, the condyls. Okay? You have the capitulum and then the trochlea. And then, behind it, you will see the olecranon fossa. So, if you remember what olecranon is, you should know that this is the fossa found in it. Okay? Siya yung um, nakikita or yung nabibend na part. Yan yung butas. Okay? So, next you have the uh, ulna. Okay? So, dapat, ma dapat din pala malaman nyo kung right or left ulna ba siya. Okay? So, usually, yun yung mga pinakamahirap lalo na kapag uh, um, you study medicine in the future, usually ganun ginagawa ng mga doktor, they just lay down um, parts of the body and then they will let you determine if it's right or left. So, yun din yung isa sa mga pinakamahirap actually. So, dapat malaman nyo siya. 
So with um, the Okay, so ang pinaka kinaibahan lang talaga ng radius at ni ul na usually is the proximal ends, okay? Yun yung mga yun yung mga taas yung mga olecranon process. Okay? So for the ul na, okay, mas mahaba siya compared to your radius. The ul na has olecranon process, it has a trochlear notch, it has a coronoid process. And then of course the ul na, ayan, medyo slim compared yung yung shaft niya is medyo slim compared to the radius um it has uh, a head and then uh, a small styloid process okay and then dito naman kung titingnan niyo yung head ng radius it's flat okay kasi so, pag nakita niyo yung head e flat radius na yon matic and it also has a radial tuberosity okay usually pa kapag ka moving exam minsan Um, nilalagyan lang ng chalk or colored chalk yung part na gustong ipa-identify. Okay? So, ganyan. Minsan dot. Minsan may pin, colored pin. So, ipapa-identify. That's how it really... Uh, ganyan talaga yung nangyayari kapag may moving exam sa lab. Okay? So, eto naman. This is this superior view of how the head of the radius looks like. Bilog siya. This one. And then, kapag ka naman sa wool na, ayan, yung olecranon process, uh, you have the trochlear notch, and of course, the coronoid process. Okay? And then, next, um, this is actually my favorite part kapag ka sa upper limbs. These are the carpal bones. Okay? Tapos, titignan nyo din kung paano naka-attach si, si radius at saka si ulna. Again, in your thumb, it's the radius. Kung nakikita. Ayan. And then, kapag ka sa pinky finger, it's the ulna. Okay? So, for the carpal bones, you have there your scaphoid, lunate, triquetrium, PC form, hamate, capitate, trapezoid, and your trapezium. So, depending also on the Uh, paano siya nilatag or paano siya pinakita sa picture, kailangan harap at likod, malalaman nyo kung anong klaseng bone siya. Okay? And then, you have your metacarpals and then, of course, your phalanges, which comprise your digits. So, the, for the phalanges, you have your proximal. Again, pag proximal, mas malapit. You have your pag distal, mas malayo. And then, you have um, proximal and Uh, proximal phalanx of the finger, middle phalanx, and your distal phalanx of the finger. Okay, so guys, uh, kung papansin ninyo, proximal and distal yung sa, sa thumb. Okay, but for your fingers, you have the proximal, middle, and your distal phalanx. Okay? So, paano naman natin determine ang mga skeletal bones kapag uh, um, uh, human yung ino-observe natin live, okay? So, ayan, madali lang naman sila. Of course, the distal, uh, as long as you know the position of the skeletal bones, you should, it, it should be um, easy for you to identify even, uh, even if you have a live model, okay? So, the best thing that you could actually do is kung wala may kasama kayo dyan sa bahay, pwede nyong pagpraktisan, okay? Mas maganda yon. It's a good training for you. So, you have there your distal clavicle, you have your jugular notch, ayan yung clavicle, pag mga payat nga daw, kitang kita yan. And of course, the middle part of your chest will be your sternum. Okay? So, eto naman kapag ka nakatalikod, Uh, if you want to check on your vertebral column, uh, may, siguro try to find someone who's very skinny para makita nyo kung saan yung uh, ano itsura ng mga vertical or mga spinous processes. Like, uh, yung mga nakikita yan sa likod. Okay. Mga spinous processes yung mga yan. And then, try to palpate or pakiramdaman nyo anong pang ilang bone na ba. Okay. Usually, that's very important and yun nga, dapat isa puso nyo kung ilang cervical, ilang thoracic at ilang lumbar. Okay? 
So, this one, ito naman kapag ka sa carpals, your radius and your ulnar, your olecranon process, your acromions, okay? Next is your per, uh, pel pelvic girdle. This is where your lower limbs attach to your body. You have the pelvis, okay, which includes your pelvic girdle and your coccyx. Okay, this one. And then you have your ischium. Okay, this one is your ischium. It is the inferior and posterior region of your pelvic girdle. The ilium, this one, yung mas malapad, parang plato. This is the most superior region. And then, of course, you have your acetabulum. Okay, this is a hip socket joint. Okay, so dyan dumidikit yung femur. Okay, ng, cut, ng legs. Okay, and then you have there again the sacrum and then the coccyx in the middle. Okay. You can also see here your pubic symphysis, your obturator foramen, and of course your subpubic angle. Okay. So this is the lateral view. You have the iliac crest, you have the ilium, the fossa. Pag lateral sa gilid, so medial niya itong side na to. So isa din to sa pinakamahirap i I identify kapag ka live ano ba siya right or left okay so dapat malaman niyo kung anong itsura or difference ng right and left kung alin ba yung nakikita inward and outward okay so this one is actually the difference between a male and a female pelvic girdle okay if mapapansin nyo, mas uh, malapad ang pelvic um, pelvic girdle ng isang babae. Okay? So, the reason is because um, of pregnancy. Okay? Mas kailangan ng mas malapad na pelvic um, girdle ng babae because it carries the weight of the baby compared to a male na mas makipot yung pelvic girdle niya. Okay, tsaka mas malapad yung um, pelvic outlet pag sa babae compared sa lalaki. Okay, so yun yung reason kung bakit uh, sinasabi nila na pag sa babae, balakangin. Okay, it's because of the size of the pelvic girdle of a woman who is, uh, ano, who can be pregnant. Okay, yung ano. Pero, meron din naman mga taong hindi super balakangin. Uh, siguro, mana-mana yun. Okay? Kasi, meron ding mga ibang babae na um, kahit na maliit yung baby na uh, dinadala nila, hindi siya ba, yung pelvic girdle nila or yung um, pinaka-pubic symphysis nila, eh, hindi bumubukas. Kaya, nadadaan sa CS or the cesarean section. Okay? So, ganun minsan yung nangyayari. Pagka hindi bumuka ang pelvis ni mother, automatic CS. Okay? Pero meron din ang mga babae talaga na balakangin talaga. Uh, usually, yung mga nakikita yung balakangin talaga is yung mga uh, katamtaman ng katawan na sexy or minsan naman kapag ka super malaki or mataba. Okay, hindi lang puro fats yun, pero talagang malaki, malaki yung balakang nila. Ganun. So, dun yung madedetermine. And that is the reason, or that is the, um, actually, the definite reason why mas, mas malapad ang balakang or pelvic girdle ng mga babae. Okay, so, this is um, just a summary of the difference between the male and the female pelvic girdles. So, it has differences in general. Um, it also has a, a difference in the sacrum, the pelvic inlet, the pelvic outlet, the subpubic angle, the ilium, ischial spines, ischial tuberosities. So, please just read on this and understand. Okay. So, for the lower limb bones, we have your femur, okay, which is actually the largest bone in, found in your body. Okay. 
So, it is for the thigh. You also have your patella, which is the kneecap. You also have your tibia, which is the large lower leg. And then the fibula, which is the small, uh, small lower leg. Tarsal bones for your ankle. And then, of course, the metatarsal bones and the phalanges. Okay? So, that comprises your lower limb. So, madali lang naman, guys, kapag uh, i-determine mo kung alin ang tibia at fibula. Okay? Unlike your radius and ulna na, na malilito kayo kung itsura nila. Okay? So, for the femur, you see there it has a, a, a head. So, the head is uh, technically attached to the acetabulum of your pelvic girdle. It has a greater trochanter and then a lesser trochanter. It also has a neck. Okay. For the body or the shaft of the femur, in the posterior view, you have a linea aspera um, marking. Okay. You have also the medial epicondyles. And then, of course, you have the lateral epicondyles. You also have a patellar groove. Okay. This is the one um, is that is already connected to your... Um, kneecap going to your um, tibia and fibula and then you also have your lateral epicondyles intercondylar fossa okay and then this is the anterior surface of your kneecap so next is the tibia and fibula so for the tibia you have the uh, medial condyle here you have the tibial tuberosity. So, again, with the size, it's very comparable that the tibia is uh, much uh, or is larger compared to your fibula. Okay? So, the fibula is uh, more likely pointed. Okay? So, it has a lateral condyle, a head, and then a lateral malleolus. For the tibia, it has a medial malleolus. Okay? And then for the feet, you have your calcaneals. Ito yung heel na tinatawag sa, taga, uh, sa paa natin. Okay, and then the talus. And then again, it has metatarsal bones. Okay, if the hand do have, meron din sa paa. You have the navicular, the cuboid, the cuneiform medial, intermediate, and the lateral cuneiforms. And then again, you have your phalanx for the uh, which has the proximal, medial, and distal for the digits. But for the great toe, you only have here your um, proximal and your distal phalanx. Okay. So, this is actually how you observe the lower limbs naman in a, um, in a human model. Okay. So, next, joints can be classified structurally as fibrous, cartilaginous, or synovial according to the major connective tissue type that binds the bones together and whether a fluid-filled joint capsule is present. So, the fibrous joint is united by a fibrous connective tissue. Subclasses are sutures, syndesmosis, and gomphosis. And then, you have the cartilaginous, which is united by the means of cartilage. Subclasses are synchrodosis and symphysis. You also have the synovial joint by a fluid cavity. They are, most, um, they are found in most joints of the appendicular skeleton. And joints are also classified in functional categories according to their degree of motion like uh, synarthrosis, arthrosis, and diarthrosis. So this image is a structure of a synovial joint. Okay? So for the functional purposes, synarthrosis are actually non-movable joints like your skull. For arthrosis, they are slightly movable like your vertebrae, and then diarthrosis are freely movable joints like your knees, your elbows, and your wrist. 
so in the structure of the synovial joint in between there you will see your joint capsule which has your synovial membrane the fibrous parts of your joint and then of course your capsule and then you see you will see inside of it the bursa and of course the joint cavity filled with your synovial fluid again the synovial fluids are very important to, um, to avoid friction okay of the bones and of course the articular cartilages but then again as we age nawawala itong mga synovial fluids na ito okay pero minsan naman sumusobra may times sino sumusobra yung a synovial fluid sa mga joints natin and i will be discussing more of it later okay so these are the types of your synovial joints depending again on their motion no for the first one we have your plane uh, like your intervertebral column so slight movements only and here are the examples just read on them and then for the saddle uh, it is usually found on the hand on your thumb okay so the type of joint there is saddle and then it's it can also lightly move and then you also have your hinge so usually one axis only okay ang kanyang movement you also have the uh, pivot or pivot for rotation purposes your ball and socket like your hip in your hip so multiple axis ang uh, movement niya and then you also have your ellipsoid found in your um, atlanto occipital two axis or multiple axis depending on the location okay so this is actually a longitudinal section of uh, bones of the bones in your body for example your elbow it looks like this it will show you how the joint capsule looks like uh, what how does a olecranon bursa looks like okay so just be familiar with this and then this one naman is uh, the the second picture uh, picture is a sagittal section of your knee okay so you will see there also the articular cartilages how the bones meet um, how the femur and the tibia meets on this section and of course how the patella is um, located or structurally structurally arranged um, in the in this section so next you have the shoulder okay this is the frontal section how your acromion process meets your um your humerus okay and then this one uh, on the other uh, on the right side is uh, the frontal section of your hip okay so how the greater trunk and the head of the femur uh, fits in your articular um, cart uh, fits in with the fossa of your hip bone okay so the types of movements first you have the flexion or the bending you also have the extension straightening abduction movement away from the midline adduction movement over the midline pronation of course rotation of the forearm with palms down supination or the rotation of the forearm with palms up rotation is a movement of the structure about the long axis so please um, practice how you do the flexion extension okay how you do flexion extension this is abduction and then adduction okay the pronation and supination this is the circumduction and then middle rotation and then the lateral rotation so usually it, these are the basic movements when you start off with little exercises okay so effects of aging on the skeletal system and joints of course um the effects will uh, be more on the decrease of collagen production 
and then there's also loss of bone density and of course degenerative changes okay so for the clinical applications so first we have um the as an example of the growth and development disorder like your gigantism or dwarfism so for gigantism this is abnormally increased body size due to the excessive growth at the epiphyseal plates and then for dwarfism naman it's the abnormal uh, abnormally small body size due to the improper growth of the epiphyseal plates okay so more likely some of the known talaga na mga giants are found in china like the pictures here that you see uh, these are women okay and then for dwarfism um ayan if you are watching tlc uh, this is the little couple so both of them are actually um little people okay dwarf sila so stunted yung growth there's also sabi ko nga kanina it's, it is also being affected by the amount of hormones being released so the more hormones that are um kumbaga kung nasusuppress de ba yung amount of um yung amount of hormones na dapat na lumalabas sa katawan or tumutulong sa katawan mag-generate ng new bones so ayan anything naman na more or less it's usually abnormal kaya nga tayo may tinatawag na homeostasis dapat balance lang palagi okay so this little couple i've been watching them no uh, actually the the woman there is a doctor okay she is a pediatrician she is a well known pediatrician but then um the conse the consequences kasi of um ha of being a dwarf is that they cannot bear uh they have difficulties in bearing a child because of their size and of course if kung full term ang isang baby mabigat talaga siya in a normal sized woman nga usually nahihirapan pa sila di ba so sa kanya uh, imp imp it has been an impossible journey for them to have children so what they did was to adapt dwarfs as well so their first adopted child was will um he came from china and then their second adopted child is zoe which came from india okay so sa mga giants naman ayan sobra sobra yung mga hormones sa katawan nila kaya ang daming nagegenerate na bone cells and yan ang consequences naman sa kanila is that of course because of the um weight of the bones diba they have difficulties in long standing uh mabagal sila okay uh oh matangkad sila they can be a part of um an athletic um activity but then again uh because of the weight of the bones diba uh mahirap din sa kanila minsan gumalaw and of course they are very they have very limited resources when it comes to clothes uh yung pagsakay nila ng mga sasakyan okay everything is actually um kumbaga made extra for them okay so next uh, another growth and development disorder is what we call your rickets so the rickets is a growth retardation due to the nutritional deficiencies in minerals like your calcium or vitamin D and this is uh, resulting in bones that are soft, weak and easily fractured. Okay? So ito yung parang mga nakokomang, uh, kumokomang yung paggrow nung ano nila. Of course, ang upper body kasi natin guys, iba medyo mabigat siya compared compared to your lower limb so of course the more the heavier the upper is ang nagsasuffer talaga ng weight is yung legs and the uh, lower parts of your body so ayan so minsan nakokomang nagiging um parang picky or sakang okay may kinalaman ata siya dun but na, i'm not really sure pero ganyan yung nangyayari okay based on the x-ray alone you see the bending of the bones Okay, compared to the normal na straight lang dapat siya. Okay. 
So next, um, this tuberculosis of the bone is a bacterial infection, typically a lung bacterium that can also affect the bones. So the spinal tuberculosis has been dated back up to 9,000 years ago. And it has been discovered in a Nesfahiran Egyptian priest, which is around 1000 BC, yung age na. So it has been excavated in the Thebes, Greece by the Egyptologi Egyptologist Eugene Grebo. And the studies have established that the presence of Mycobacterium tuberculosis complex DNA in an ancient bony specimen. So even before, no meron na talagang tuberculosis. Okay, it doesn't necessarily mean that tuberculosis of the lungs, that's it. It can also affect your um, or uh, the bacteria of the lung tuberculosis can also affect your bones. So, another one, you have the tuberculosis uh, spondylitis or the POTS disease. So, you also have the tubercul uh, tuberculous arthritis and the extraspinal tuberculous osteomyelitis. So, usually, ganyan yung nangyayari, guys. You have swelling, and then called abscess. Okay, so nakikita siya sa mga x-ray na meron kang parang extra fluid in your um, bony areas. Okay, kapag ka sa x-ray kasi dapat ang nakikita lang is yung um, illumination ng bones. But when there is a uh, presence of water, usually cloudy yung itsura niya. So, eh. Next is uh, osteomalacia. This is um, a type of disease for decalcification. So, this is the softening of adult bones due to calcium depletion and also caused by vitamin D deficiency. So, if again, the si kidney, um, it is. Um, it has a role also when it comes to the calcium homeostasis. So, if your kidneys do have um, issues in your liver as well, di ba si liver din, meron din siyang kinalaman sa vitamin D production. So, more likely, you can develop osteomalacia kung you have problems with that. So, if to compare uh, healthy bones, kung makikita nyo, compact. Di ba? Compact yung mga healthy bones. But with osteomalacia, lumalaki yung mga um, openings niya, okay? Kung baga nagde-degrade yung quality ng tissues of the bones. Okay? Next is arthritis. So, this is joint disorders. So, arthritis is inflammation of a joint which causes um, th uh, the causes are including infectious agents, metabolic disorders, trauma, and immune order disorders. And then, you also have the other type, which is the uma, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, which is the general connective tissue autoimmune disease. Okay, so pag arthritis, marami siyang um, pwedeng cause or dahilan. But for rheumatoid, it's a connective tissue autoimmune disease. Okay, parang namamaga. Okay, and then for osteoarthritis, yung nawawala yung mga... Uh, cartilages. Okay. So, for osteoarthritis, for the late, uh, late stage, you will see their fusiform swelling of the joints. And they are actually, pag, uh, sa mga joints of the phalanges, you will see there the Heber dense nodes. Okay. Para siyang may mga bukol-bukol. So, the arthritis aren't um, exclusive only in the hands, pwede siya sa tuhod, pwede siya sa siko, pwede siya sa anything in your body that has, that has joints. Okay? And then, another one is gout. So, this is because of the increased production and accumulation of uric acid crystals in the tissues, including your joint capsules. So, if you're fond of eating um, vegetables that are mabuto, or from buto, like your mungo, your okra, your talong, yan, matataas ang mga uric acid yan. And even if you're fond of eating 
um, mga barbecue na laman loob, like isaw, bituka ng baboy, or bituka ng kung anong bituka ba yan. Okay? So, yan. Mga internal organs. Usually, mga mahilig magsisig, o kaya mahilig magbopis, yan. Yung mga internal organs ng animals na kinakain, mataas sila sa uric acid. So, ang kailangan lang naman gawin dyan is moderation. Okay? Kapag ka nagkakaroon kasi ng gout, guys, uh, yan. Uric acid kasi ay, kumbaga sa weight niya is uh, mabigat siya. Kaya kapag uh, dinadala ng blood, okay, usually nangyayari ang gout eh, sa mga lower extremities, lalo na sa paa. Okay? So, dun siya usually naiiwan. Kaya nagbibuild up siya dun. Okay? At saka, masakit to guys. Matagal, medyo matagal tong mawala ah. Okay? Yung mga ano. So, if you already feel something na hindi maganda kapag kumakain kayo ng mga ganun, you just moderate it. Okay? Next is bursitis. This is another um, joint na um, disorder. Okay? Yan naman yung sa mga uh, pag sinabing bursitis, of course, the bursa of your joints nag inflame sila. Okay? Like your, yan, sa elbows. Yan. Lumalaki sila. And then this one, this is very common, bunions. Okay? So, bunions are deformations of the metatarsal, like the great toe. It may be accompanied also with bursitis and can also be because of wearing tight shoes. Okay? So, if you're the type of person who really, really likes to wear tight shoes, kahit na masakit na talaga sa paa, maawa kayo sa mga paa nyo, you may develop bunions. Okay? So, ayan. Usually, kapag ka sa mga matatanda nga, eh, may mga bunions sila, try nyo magmasid kung sino sa inyo mga may bunions. Okay? They, ayan. Ang nangyayari kasi, namamaga yung mga um, bursa sa, sa feet, and then, nagkakos ng deformation. Lalo na sa big toe. So, you have different levels, like your mild, you have the moderate, and then you have the large, and of course, the severe na halos nagpapatong na yung mga fingers ng pa. Okay? So, make your feet comfortable to avoid have, having bunions. Next is scoliosis. Okay? Di ba nga kanina, guys, sinabi ko sa inyo na there are several curvatures um, na meron sa vertebral column. Okay, so with an with a healthy um, backbone, of course, derecho. Okay, but then the curvatures are posterior and anterior. Pero minsan nagkakaroon ng problema, nagsa sidewards yung mga uh, curvature nila. Instead na anterior posterior lang nagkakaroon ng right or left. Okay, so like this one in the picture, you see there the thoracic scoliosis. So when you say thoracic scoliosis, the region or the level of the thoracic vertebra, nagkakaroon siya ng deformity or nagkakaroon siya ng um, pagbend, maybe laterally. Okay? And then kapag ka lumbar scoliosis naman, of course, it's the lumbar region. Kapag ka thoracolumbar, okay, pagka mga kinukombine-combine, of course, it is already comprised of the thoracic and the lumbar regions. And then, kapag combined scoliosis, ito talaga yung masakit na type of scoliosis. Of course, you have this hanggang cervical mo. Okay? Hanggang pababa, eh, talagang paes yung itsura ng vertebra mo or scoliosis mo. So, this is an example um, of how um, scoliosis are being treated nowadays. So, makikita nyo talaga na kapag ka, nakatalikod lang eh, merong, imbes na straight yung body, eh talagang may pa-right or may pa-left pa minsan. So, other than um, surgery, corrective surgery, kasi hindi naman lahat afford talaga yung mga surgery na ganyan. Of course, there have been um, products that have been released to also cater yung mga patients with scoliosis, like these braces. Okay, yung mga braces kasi they tend to give the body yung proper posture. Okay, 
Ayan. So, if you check on the x-ray, talagang super bended siya. No? But with the brace, kung makikita nyo, medyo dumederetso. So, it also aids your um, posture. Okay? And one thing kasi guys, diba na uh, pangit din kasi with scoliosis is that you also feel pain. Kasi diba kung naaalala nyo kanina, may mga foramen, yung vertebral column. And then, it is where your um, spinal nerves go out. So, imagine if your spinal nerves are being, um, kumbaga, naiipit dun sa curvature na yun. Talagang makakaramdam ka na ng pain. Depending on the level of the curvature, sya, dun magdedepend din kung aling part ng katawan mo yung makakaramdam ng discomfort. Okay? So, usually, anything na, kunyari, um, meron kang isang level dun sa thoracic mo na may problema ka with scoliosis. Kung saan siya nagsimula, anything below it, dun mo mararamdaman yung discomfort. Okay? Laging ganun. So, ayan. Other, uh, yung mga ibang tinatawag natin ng mga spine disease, you have the if you have here the normal, kapag ka normal yung um, posture mo, you have naman the lordosis. Nagkakaroon ka ng curvature sa lower vertebra mo. Kapag ka kyphosis naman sa taas, kapa, parang nakukuba. You also have the flat back. Okay, yung super flat talaga, yung likod. Walang curvature man ng posterior anterior. And then you have the sway back na both halos yung taas at saka yung baba ay eh, curve na curve. Okay? Kaya minsan, di ba guys, may mga tao na labas na labas yung yung chan o kaya naman minsan yung balikat nila parang pakuba na. Yan. May mga diseases yung mga ganyan usually. And then, pagka scoliosis naman talaga, katulad ng isang picture kanina na pinakita ko before this one. Yan. Makikita nyo na talagang yung likod nila is nagka-curve. Okay? So, as early as now, guys, you also try to practice proper posture, especially when you're studying, especially when you do something. You try to correct yourself na hindi kayo nag slouch To also, ano, parang avoid these um, types of spine diseases to occur. Okay? So, ayan. Sway back. This is actually how they look like. Sway back. You have a lumbar lordosis. This is the thoracic kyphosis. And then you have the forward head. And then of course, a good posture is just straight like this. So imagine if you have yung mga gandong klaseng diseases. Of course, in in the medical field, dapat we are expected to understand the situation of a patient. Hindi dapat natin sila pinagtatawanan. Hindi dapat natin, uh, hindi, hindi da, tayo dapat judgmental. Okay? Maybe we, Kasi baka mamaya, oy sabihin, ay, si ano, tignan mo yung tumayo. Pero hindi nyo pala alam na there's always an underlying reason why a person looks like that. So, dapat hindi tayo nag-judge. Okay? So, this is another example. Okay? Other than using parang cosmetic types of um, medication for uh, spine treatments, of course, meron talaga tayong surgical na tinatawag. So, with surgical naman, uh, kung makikita nyo yung curvature na sobra, no, 85 degrees curvature, going down to 52 degrees of curvature, malaki din yon So, meron tayong mga tinatawag na uh, surgical ways. Okay, ito naman yung nilalagyan ng mga titanium, you have your bolts, you have your screws, para lang maidiretso yung spinal cord. Okay, so this is very expensive. Siguro mga nakaka-afford lang na ito, ito talagang may pera din talaga. Okay? And, um, yun, magiging normal din naman. As long as, um, the condition of a patient is, um, uh, kumbaga, curable and doable on, on the side then of the surgeon who's doing this one. But imagine if you have titanium screws and titanium rods on your, at your back, pag pumasok ka ng SM, tutunog ka. So, ganun yung mga... But I, I think they are already developing naman yung mga uh, ibang uh, types of uh, or ibang materials to be able to come up with materials that 
na hindi naman siguro pag lumabas kayo nakakahiya, di ba? May mga ganun kasi na, lalo na yung mga sinaunang um, na-develop na ways of medication na meron palang nagpalagay ng tornilyo or ano, may mga na, na nagkaroon ng fracture and then the only way is to parang embed Met- metals in the body, di ba? Pagpapasok sila sa mall, laging tutunog, feeling tuloy, nagaano sila, nagsha-shoplift. Okay? So, ayan. Pero, I think now, what they, since talagang nag evolve ang, ang science, they are trying to develop new um, things, no? Para i-incorporate sa mga ng klaseng situations. Okay? So, again, this is just a summary of all the representative diseases and disorders that I have um, discussed. And thank you very much for listening. I hope you have learned a lot regarding the skeletal system. If you have any questions about this lecture, um, don't hesitate to message. Okay? And we will be, and I will be more than happy to clarify some concepts if you haven't understand it. Okay? Thank you very much.